Hi everyone. Today we're going to talk about jelly printing. So we're going to do the jelly plate versus a plastic sheet. That plastic sheet, you could use a plastic bag, you could use a plastic cereal bag, you could use a Ziploc bag. It's a great way to recycle. I'm going to show you the flexibility of choosing an alternate to the jelly plate for mono printing. I'm going to paint my page in my journal first. So I've just chosen some colors that I thought I would like. So I wanted to put down a little gesso because this will give me some texture. There's some things that got in here. You guys, I don't worry about this stuff because I'm not looking for perfection. This is okay for me. And the fact that this isn't flat, I'm even thoroughly happy with that. I'd like this to be a little bit drier, but this was a super thin coat. I used a catalyst tool to spread it and I just made it nice and thin because that's how I wanted it. And then I saw these colors. This is an old something that I made. I wouldn't even know what colors I used, but I liked this. So I'm going to uh, work with these sort of colors again. I don't know if it's gonna work and I don't worry about it. The gesso gives me sort of this whitish background, which I think I like. And I'm just using, today I'm using some golden acrylics. No reason, it's what I chose. It's kind of a loose brush, but let me see what we can do here. I don't need everything to be totally painted. I just wanted to have something to get started with in the background. So I started with this yellow color. You could totally see that these are well-loved paints. I've had these for a very long time. And I do like these fluid acrylics quite a bit. I don't even clean off my brush. I just get right to it. I'm not worried about it being painted everywhere. I just want color in the background. That's all I'm doing. You can consider these more abstract than anything, I suppose. Uh, the colors, in case you're wondering, this is Indian yellow hue. And this was quinacridone magenta, and this one is sap green. So I just want a quick coverage. I'm not looking for anything too outlandish, too perfect, too anything. And this is probably gonna be about where I leave it now. So this is what I wanted. So I'm gonna just do a tiny bit. Now, this is what a gel plate will do. It's a little less flexible than what I wanted for my plate today, but I decided I should show you the difference. So I'm just going to roll out. So we're just going to leave it like that. And I want to put bubble wrap prints on it. It's hard to just lay your, your page over top of the plate. So I do it this way. Now I still have the plastic attached here. I don't really want straight edges. So I'm just going to put it down like this so I can rub it this way, but I could also fold up the book, flip it over, and put a little pressure this way. So then I just flip this back over and pull. Now I don't really want that so I sometimes take a baby wipe and wipe off some of the edging. So that's how you can print with your jelly plate in your book. So this was just using your jelly plate and it's quite, you saw what I did. The next thing I'm going to show you is using this. Okay, so this is just a plastic sheet. You could use a plastic bag. You could use a empty cereal cracker bag, whatever. And I, brayer, and I'm just brayering. I'm sure that's a technical word onto this plate. Now this is a little bit much. I am gonna roll this off. So I'm a little worried about the amount of black on here. I could do a couple things. I could just take some of it off onto my jelly plate if I want. Ooh, and look at that weird texture, right? Kind of love that. Okay, so you could see there's this weird texture. Here's what I love about this though. You can put this down anywhere. Use your fingers, use the end of your brush, make designs. You could use the brayer see how much of it you could get off. This is so flexible because it's so flexible. And here's what happens. Ta-da. So you could do so many things with this particular. Let's try and see if we can give it a little more. Um, you can do so many things with these plastic type sheets as a monoprint. Uh, 
I wanted to soften my edge over here. Now you don't even notice the edge, right? Now this is a little squiggly, uh, scratchy, scribbly. So I'll probably do more to this than just this, but I just wanted to give you the lowdown on these plastic sheets, which I think are fabulous. So this one right here, let's use the blue and see what we could pull off of the plate. Now, sometimes you need a thick coat, depending on what you've got. I think I need a little more, but I can see all these little imperfections here that I actually love. You can see them here. And I actually have a clean sheet of paper over on the other side of me. I'm going to grab. So you can see that the jelly plate and the plastic bag give you sort of two different looks. The jelly plate isn't as flexible, right? It's got to be flat. Okay, so this is what I pulled off. There are other bits in there that look yummy. That came out pretty good. I would use this ripped up in my journal or maybe I'll keep going with it because I, I really like this. The beauty to the plate, I mean, versus the plastic, you can have this roll of paint and you don't have to take all the color off. You use your nails and look, I'm still getting, I still can get things off of here. Your nails, a brush, a something blunt, and you can make all kinds of designs. So I think my nails work a little bit better, but this is dry. So, you know, it's not going to be perfect, but I like this because you could just do little pieces, parts here. You could just do what I did here and scribble or draw or whatever. And look at, I kind of love this. So there's a lot of applications for this kind of jelly printing. So now I've laid down some of this Martha Stewart pink paint, which is party streamer. But I was like, oh, let me try to wipe off some of this. Oh my goodness. This might be my favorite thing to do right now. So I am just taking a, a dry baby wipe. It's the one I dried my, wash my hands with before. And I'm making designs here. By just rubbing and scraping this is too much paint. No, oh, maybe I did want it on there. <laughs> I did want all that paint on there. Let me put a little dab more. I am going to take this side of this paper. This is much better with a piece of something behind it, like a piece of cardboard. So the cardboard, just cardboard, sort of gives you a little cushion for connection. Okay. Now, hopefully, I'm going to peel this off. So here's what I'm going to tell you. Yes and yes. So this is how it came out. Now, I would have loved to have more of that come off, but I think that was my fault. So I'll probably take another color, maybe some light, oh, something light, uh, maybe yellow, maybe green. And then we're going to do it again with another piece of paper and see how it comes out. But this, to me, this rawness of this is super yummy and it can benefit from another layer color of paint. So let's try it. So I have this Granny Smith. Again, it's another Martha Stewart acrylic paint. So I'm just putting on a quick coat. This needs more paint. I can tell by the feel of it. So I'm going to put on a little more. We're going to do this. Make sure it's all covered. It feels quite, this is old paint now. So it feels a little dry. I don't know. Could be a bust. Could be really good. So I'm going to go with that. So now it's all a game, a guessing game, a playing game because this isn't going to be perfect. And that's the point to using the plastic bag or the plastic sheet or whatever. Um, and that's the fun of it, in my opinion. So it doesn't all always come off perfectly. And yet it comes off looking amazing. So that's what's left on the plate. And we probably could get more off. And this is the pull. You know, I would cut this out cut this out or just use this as it is. I mean, there's so much goodness on here. You can keep pulling and keep playing. And the thing that I love about this is how flexible it is so that you can just use a little corner in your book if you wanted. 
and you'd be done. So this is the fun of playing with a plastic bag or something like this. Maybe what we should do is put a coat of paint, put a piece of paper and let it dry and then pull it off. Maybe weight it. I'm going to try it. I'll just use this. So what we're going to do is we're going to see if we let the paper dry on the fake jelly roll plate, how that will come out. So what we're going to do is just put that on there. I'm going to weight it. I'm going to put a couple books on it and let this dry for 10 or 15 minutes and see what we end up with. That could be the answer. Put this on. I'm going to get something else bigger. I love the plastic bag because I love its imperfections. That's what I love it for is it's there's so much imperfection. It's so good to me. Okay, I'm going to wait this and then we'll come back and I'll show you. Okay, I've let this dry for about an hour on this and we're going to pull it off and see what happens. And there you go. It all came off. Look how glossy it looks. Okay, so here are the prints that we made with the plastic sheet. This is a, a sheet protector. I, I don't know. We have this also. And I, you know, it doesn't look like much, but I love both of these so much. And then we did this one also. So I like that. But this is what came off of that. Wow. That's like a glossy photo. That's insane to me. I think because the, the sheet protector is very smooth. And maybe that, you know, the paint is acrylic paint, so it's plastic. So maybe that's why. But again, I think letting it dry, I put weight on top of it. I put a, a bunch of heavy books and letting it dry was the key to pulling it all the way off the sheet. And then, of course, we did, we did this. So the value to me is the different things. Now, I know this is just scribbly looking, but the value to me is the different sort of things we can do here. Are you aware that there is a community tab on the YouTube pages? If you are, pay attention to that spot. I'm going to be doing a lot of polls and maybe information. I'm looking to start a community where we can actually chat back and forth to each other. So if you're at all interested in that, please make sure to pay attention to the community tab here on Art Journal Life. And I'll be sure to spread more journaling fun and love and whatever else we need because that's what I want to do. So if you're interested, look for that for this weekend. And again, I'm going to be sharing polls and asking you questions and seeing how I can help the community, how we can grow together, etc. Also, if you liked this video, I hope that you'll subscribe to the channel. I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you so much. Thanks for being here.